Hello there! With the launch of patch 1027, Blizzard have finally done a pass over the BFA raids to make sure that they are fully soloable. And that means that for many of us, it's now the time where we can start farming the BFA raid mounts, or at least trying to. The Battle for Dazara Law raid has two of the most anticipated raid mounts out there for solo raid collectors. The awesome Gmod from the Mechatork Encounter and the Glacial Tide Storm from Jaina. So I thought I'd do a full run through the raid on a Dragonflight Season 4 character and see how it all feels. One piece of good news is that if you've never unlocked Battle for Azeroth, I was able to access the raid in both Horde and Alliance on a character that had never been in the BFA areas at all. To access it on the Horde side, simply take the portal from Orgrimmar to the Zaralor, then fly over to the back side of the main pyramid to this location here, and then you're in. On the Alliance side, you just take the portal from Stormwind to Boralus, then head over to the ships over here, and again, you're in. Now, if you just want the Jaina mount, there is a handy skip straight to Jaina. Just speak to Ensign Roberts on the Alliance side or Atoye on the Horde side and off you go. You can use the timeline down below to skip to that bit of the video. Now, if you also want the G mod or just to farm the transmog and a bunch of raw gold, then the rest of the video is hopefully for you. I am doing this on a level 510 tank character, but I'm pretty confident that you can do most of it on a level 480 plus character, albeit there are a couple of caveats that I will come to later on. I am doing this on the Alliance side, but the raid had a unique system which leads to some small differences here and there, so if you're doing it in the Horde, it might look slightly different in places. But don't be put off with that, because the fights are the same no matter what side you do it on. First of all, we have the Champion of the Light encounter. Now this one is really simple to do. On the Horde, just attack and kill Frida Iron Bellows. And on the Alliance, just focus on Rowani. They're quite simple to kill. Try and avoid the light stuff on the ground, but really this won't give you any problems at all. Once you've killed those two bosses, you want to go to the right hand side. You do need to wait a little bit for a bit of RP before the way opens up for you. This raid is going to remind you a bit of Dragonflow as there's a ton of unskippable RNP in it, which is a bit annoying, but what you're going to do. Once the way is open, you just head up the stairs. Now, I managed to skirt around a lot of the ads that were on the way to the next encounter, but some of them you can't avoid, but I just kept going right up to the boss area and then I killed the ads that I picked up there. That does save a little bit of time compared to trying clearing out all of the ads, so I definitely do recommend doing it that way. Now, the next encounter, Jade Fire Masters, is actually one of the slightly more awkward ones to do. What I did was I attacked Anathos first, who was on the right-hand side, and I just burned him down as fast as I could. Now, what then happens is that you get a maze. Now, I initially found it a bit hard to figure out how to get through the maze, but then I noticed there was a little ox wandering about, and it turned out that ox was showing me the correct route through the maze. So basically, all I had to do was to follow the oxen until I got to the end of the maze. At the end of the maze, there's a set of barriers. Now, I found that the only bit of the barrier that I could attack was the middle bit. So if you do the bits at the side, the health bar just won't move. So just concentrate in the middle bit. And when you see the health bar going down, you know you've got the right spot. Once you burn through the barrier, it's back then onto the boss. Now, don't worry when the boss teleports you up into mid-air. All you need to do then is to just basically stand and wait for the timer to run out. You'll get teleported back down to the boss and then you can continue on with the fight and you'll be able to burn her down without too much difficulty. The next encounter, which is Grong, is a very straightforward encounter. Just focus Gron down and kill him as quickly as you can. You can safely ignore any of the ads that spawn and just focus on the big gorilla. Now, when heading to the next encounter, which is Opulence, all you need to do is to head up to the top of the stairs, fight your way through the ads. You might get skewered by a spear at one point, which can be a bit annoying. You just need to wait for it to go away and then continue to fight your way up. Once you get to the top of the area, 
what you need to do is if you look at the building you'll see a bit of a hole in the ground at the base of the building and that's where you're going down next to the next encounter and now it's on to opulence now originally the way this fight worked was that it was in two phases and you initially you had to split the raid into two groups and fight two mini bosses one in the right one in the left and go through a little bit of a sort of windy path with a bunch of traps to get to the main boss which was opulence but the good news is you don't have to do any more of that or what you do now is you just ignore all of that and go straight through the middle into the main boss room. The boss won't be there when you arrive, but don't worry about that. Just hang about and after a short delay, the boss will obligingly spawn for you. And then you can just go ahead and burn him down, which you do need to do as quickly as possible because he does cover the ground in a lot of uh, fire pools that will ultimately do quite a bit of damage to you. I personally didn't find it hard though to burn them down in time so I don't think you'll have any issues either. Next and we're on to Conclave of the Chosen which is a bit of a council fight. Now I actually in this video started with Paku but Gonk has a lot more annoying mechanics to deal with so I'd personally recommend that when you do the fight you initially focus Gonk, burn him down first. After that it doesn't really matter which of the four that you kill. Uh, if you've never done the fight before you only fight two of them at a time. As you kill one another one will come in and join the fight. But overall just focus in killing the four bosses or whatever ones you can attack and ignore all the ads. You can mostly just ignore the rest of the mechanics for now and just burn them down as quickly as you can. Now back when the raid was originally current, I remember that after this fight, both myself and half the rest of the raid team would always get lost and go the wrong way. So what you want to do is you want to go to the direction that's right on the map and head down there towards the lift. But now we're on to the next fight, which is King Rastakan. Now, I have heard people say that even with Blizzard's recent changes, they've been getting themselves one shot by Bonsamdi. Now, I personally, that didn't happen to me, but it might mean there's a bit of a DPS check in terms of burning this fight down. So that is something just to bear in mind. But anyway, the fight itself is pretty straightforward. What you need to do is to just run in and target the ads first. You have to kill the ads before Rastakan will take any damage but as soon as you've killed the ads just focus on Rastakan and burn them down as much as you can. You will briefly get effectively stunned while Bin Samdi becomes active but after a few seconds you'll be freed and you'll be able to go back into the fight and yet just keep on Rastakan and burn them down as quickly as you can and I'm pretty sure you shouldn't have any problems at all. Okay well now the end is finally on sight as we move on to High Tinker Mechator. Now this is a fight that drops the awesome Gmod mount if you're doing it on Mythic difficulty so that will be something to watch out for. Now, originally in this fight, the spark bots used to have a really annoying stun and you had to kind of like run away from them and try and avoid them while you were doing the fight. But the good news is with blizzard changes, that stun is no longer a thing. So you can just stand there and you can just burn Mechator down while you're completely surrounded by the spark bots. Now, after you burn them down to, I think it's around about 50% health, he will take off into the air with a bit of a shield and you just have to wait that out just just wait the timer out until he comes back down to continue the fight. Now I did find that at this point in the fight I started to take a ton of damage. I was on a tank character but I was certainly having to use my mitigation and my self heals to keep myself up. So that is something you'll want to keep, be aware of at that point. I think the damage is mostly coming from the spark bot so it might well be that at that point as you go into the second phase of the fight they will have to do a bit of movement to keep away from them. I'm not 100% sure about that. As I said, I was in a tank character, so I was able to just basically survive my way through it and get him killed. And next, it's on to Stormwell Blockade. Now, this fight still has two very tight DPS checks. I found that I couldn't 
beat the second DPS check on my tank. Now, I do think I probably could have if I'd concentrated a little bit more, but I decided to change to my DPS specialization for this. What this means is that I would say that you probably need to be item level 500 or above at level 70 in Dragonflight to take this boss down. But anyways, Getting into the fight itself, what you want to do is do the mini boss on the right hand side first. So take the flight point to the right over there. This mini boss does have its own DPS check, which is a mind control mechanic that you do not want to kick in. So burn them down as fast as you can with cooldowns if necessary. Then take the port over to the opposite boat. This boss hasn't really anything that would particularly challenge you, so you can just kill her at your leisure and then port back to the main boss. Now, when the boss main boss hits 100 energy, again, you'll basically get one shot. So you want to burn the boss down as fast as you possibly can. And again, you might need cooldowns just to push yourself over the edge. But anyway, I was able to do this without too much trouble on my DPS specialization at item level 510. So good luck with the fight and hopefully Hopefully you'll be able to get it down too. And now it's on to the main event of the entire raid, which is a Jaina Proudmoore fight. Now, the good news is that Blizzard have really made some pretty significant nerfs to the mechanics in this fight, and it's now very straightforward. What you need to do is to speak to the captain of the ship to get the fight underway. There is quite a bit of RP, so there's a little bit of waiting time before Jaina will come down and be attackable. Once she is, just go in and attack Jaina. Just be careful of her big frontal cone attack. It's really obvious and well telegraphed, so just sidestep that when that happens. Once you get her to about 55%, you'll go into phase two. Now, for phase two, what you need to do is to go down the ramp from the ship into the area down below. And as well as Jaina, there's going to be four mirror images. Now, you have to kill all four of those mirror images before you attack Jaina, because otherwise she really just won't take any damage. So get rid of the mirror images. They've quite low health, so there's not really any issue. And then go and you just attack Jaina and you just burn her down as quickly as you can. The ice block mechanics that used to cause a lot of trouble in this fight no longer affect you. So it's pretty much just a little bit of a DPS race in terms of burning a health down to 5%, which is when the fight ends, you get teleported back onto the ship and hopefully you'll get the mount. And that's it, how to solo the battle for the Zalaror raid. Hopefully you'll have some decent luck getting the mounts. Let me know in the comments down below if you do. And if you have any tips and tricks to make any of this easier, do also let all of us know that as well. If you found this video even vaguely useful, please let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. And if you want to support my channel to make more videos like this, do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new video goes live. There'll be loads more guides, news and opinion videos coming real soon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.